Hello, today I will be demonstrating the process I took to get these Victorias from the Malifaux Hired Swords box set painted up. I originally did a live commentary as I was going but it ended up being a bit awful as environmental factors such as the neighbour playing drums at all hours, the dog and traffic and all that, it made it rather well unpleasant I'm certain so yeah. So once again, retrospective commentary. So the miniatures in question um, are assembled, uh, unprimed in Tamiya Fine Surface Primer in grey. Um, sorry about the lighting, it's pretty awful. And the, um, yeah. I've also tried a new um, camera mounting to make things a little easier, and the uh, whole camera apparatus is a bit less obstructive. Anyway, um, that's neither here nor there, so let's um, move on to something a bit more interesting. I'll be doing all of the leather parts first, and to do that I'll be applying the highlight colours for them first. As past me is pointing out, the colours I'll be using for them are the uh, Cold Black and um, Great Coat Grey, Great Grey and Thalma Black as our shade. Now the way I'll be doing this is I'll be applying the highlight colours first in its entirety and then I'll be using black to shade down so the process itself is pretty simple. Um, let's just get some speed happening. I'm going to apply a base coat of the highlight colours, um, like three or four even layers, until I get a fairly even coverage overall. Yeah, for the top parts I'll be doing coal black as my highlight colour, and for the bottom parts, such as the boots, I'll be doing uh, great coat grey as my um, highlight colour, in order to get two separate shades going. I've gone ahead and applied my highlight colour. Now we're going to begin the process of shading it down so that it looks like a black leather. We are going to accomplish this by applying many thin glazes to the um, parts that we've painted in order to start uh, transitioning the colour from the highlight colour to black. Here's the glaze I prepared earlier, so as you can see it's practically liquid and we're just making sure it's such. We're making sure it's very thin on the palette, on no, on our paper, sorry. And our first stage, we're just going to do a flat um, coat overall to begin that transition. In subsequent steps, we're going to further refine the places where we, places where we put the black, uh, starting to focus in areas that are in a natural shadow to bring more um, um, depth to the model. Eventually the model will look like it has um, the majority of the surface area black and only the most exposed and raised areas remain um, somewhat on the base colour, uh, though only barely. So with that we are just about done for the black. The next stage will be to bring back some of the original highlight colour by doing some uh, broad area and edge highlighting. So preparing to bring back the um, original highlights. Now I will be using a mix of the two highlight colours, that is coal black and grey coat grey, and I'm also using the black to uh, tone it down when necessary a little bit um, in order to prevent the highlight from overwhelming the black colour. The 
So yeah, I'm currently working on getting a half decent um, highlight, well, first highlight working. I think this one is for the broad flat areas such as on the top of the breasts, um, the shoes and the back of the jacket, especially where the jacket follows the curves of the body. trick is not to use the raw highlight color straight away as that will um, really kill any um, transition from the between the black and the highlight color. And now we're on to the final edge highlighting. I'm going um, picking up the um, very sharpest edges on the coat. This includes the edges of the collar, a lot of the folds on both the front and the back and on the very edges of the tail coat. So yeah, this process is pretty much um, identical to edge highlighting. Um, usual th thin paint, but not too thin. Just try to make sure it doesn't run. Okay, so I want to bring a bit more um, contrast to those highlights, so I'm going to add in a bit of Moro White to our um, highlight color of Cog Black to put on the very sharpest edges of the coat. These things include the really tr protruding bits like the collar, a lot of the sharpest folds and so on. Okay, you can see me fixing up a mistake there, That's um, I decided the highlight was a bit too much. I first um, wet the area with my with the water from my secondary um, water well, you can see it in the back there, and then got my scrubbing brush, brush, which is a small synthetic brush, which the edges cut with the very tips cut off to make it more of a stippling brush, and then I just removed the paint before it could fully dry on the miniature, after of course wetting it with said um, clean brush. Anyway, there isn't too much more to see at this stage with this figure just about done. So rather than um, showing you the process for doing the other figure, since it's far less surface area, we'll skip forward and move on to the next stage of the painting. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the flesh. I've already done the initial base coat of the mid-tone of Midland flesh. And yeah, rather than forcing you to watch me get that down, I'll instead force you to watch me apply all of the shades and highlights um, by hand to these two figures. So let's get to work. Okay, I'm going to start with the first shade color and that color will be Cardic Flesh. So for a start, I'm applying a very thin glaze to many of the areas that I'm that are going to be in shadow. These include the eye sockets under the neck and under the arms where applicable and generally anywhere else that I needs to have shadow defined in order for it to look realistic. The reason why I'm using a cup palette for the, um, the glaze is that um, a highly liquid paint tends to dry faster on a fairly flat surface, whereas the um, uh, the shape of the um, the cup prevents it from drying as fast. So as you can see, I've got my next paint out. Um, this will be my second shade color, and the color in question is Idrian Flesh. So just doing some final additional um, reinforcements to that first shade layer and we'll move on. Mm -hmm. 
So the case for this highlight is more or less the same as the previous one, except we're going to try and focus on an even smaller and even deeper surface area. These areas include the very depths of the eye sockets, the very uh, cleft between the um, under the chin and the neck, um, some of the area on the on the neck that's a little more visible, if that makes any sense whatsoever, and generally areas where that aren't going to be getting hit by much sunlight. So, as you can see, that didn't take too long. So I've gone ahead and moved on to the neck, to the first highlight layer. In this case, it's Rin Flesh. Right here, I'm um, beginning to apply my highlights to the top of the head and the cheek. Basically trying to accentuate the cheekbones, chin, and the very top of the head, which obviously the bald parts catch the most sunlight. Likewise with the shade colour, I'm trying to go for a very thin paint and apply it in multiple layers to try and get a gradual transition, taking advantage of P3 Paint's natural opacity. Here we're going to do our most extreme highlight. I'm going to do a mix of Rin Flesh and um, I believe that's Menoth White Highlight. Yeah, and that's going to make up my most extreme highlight. And we're going to focus it on the very tips of the cheekbones and some of the very extreme, I don't know, protruding areas of flesh, such as the tip of the nose, um, maybe the tip of the chin, I don't really remember. And obviously, yeah, the uh, highest cheekbones and also the fingers, especially the bony joints. I believe at this point I decided that I'd gone a bit too far with the highlights, so I'm taking them back a bit. And finally, to tie the entirety of the face together, I'm applying an overall uh, glaze of the mid-tone of Midland Flesh. This should soften the um, transition between the various highlight and shade colours and get the miniature looking a lot more cohesive. Okay, I'm going to start on some further details on the face, and the colour I will be using is uh, Sanguine Base, I believe, and we're aiming to paint the slightly rosy cheeks on her face. I must admit, this is a part which I had a lot of trouble with, as um, I had the air conditioner running, and that caused my glaze to do very str annoying things basically. Um, there was, it was too liquidy and the end result was ultimately tide marks as the glaze was a bit, went on a bit too thick, dried too fast and left the pigment forming a ring around the um, patch of paint. Now this is something you absolutely do not want to happen. When applying the glaze you want an even coat that tints the entire surface, not something that causes the pigment to accumulate in particular points. I think a major trick with glazes is, it, is to aim for a liquid consistency, but not too liquid, and also make sure your brush is very, very, very um, lightly loaded. That will help prevent the um, tint you're trying to apply from ruining um, your paint job by doing things like causing tide marks. An alternative way to possibly achieve the same effect, which I might try in future, would be to attempt this sort of thing by using a pre-made wash, but obviously not in the capacity of a wash. Basically, use a, br a brush loaded with a small amount of wash, um, thinned out to a um, and, and loaded to a glaze consistency to put the colour on, because if the wash is a decent one, it shouldn't pull or run, provided you do it correctly. 
anyway, here is an example of the um, process done successfully. If you look at the um, scar tissue on his left arm, it's tinted slightly red. This was done by applying a couple of layers of very thin Army Painter red wash over it, but not as a wash, like, like I'm doing conventional painting. Right, so what I d didn't record was a long process of repeatedly fixing that up until I had some colour on the cheeks that I was happy with. I ended up going with a slightly thicker glaze just to keep the paint um, layer even. So I'm now going to attempt something that I was going to attempt in the Taylor video but wussed out at the last minute over, and that is tattoos. So since this is the Victoria of Ashes, I believe, I'm going to try to go for a couple of more morbid tattoos. The first being a teardrop on her eye, which is, well, a prison tattoo, quite frankly, that symbolizes that you indeed have killed someone, and no doubt she probably has. Um, the other is a series of dots around her neck, as if to um, mark a line for the headsman, I suppose. Once again, morbid, but seriously, this is Malifaux. Um, morbid is kind of, you know, part and parcel for the entire thing. In terms of process, um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Just take your color and freehand your design on. Um, I had a bit of flesh tone on the brush earlier. That was me going back and correcting the teardrop shape to make it more look, like, uh, look more like a teardrop. You can do that, and as long as you fix it up and make it in tune with the rest of your shading and highlighting, it probably won't be too noticeable. Um, now I'm doing the um, the dots around her neck, and there's the well first stage of the result, basically. What am I doing now? I think this might be ah um, uh, yep. No, I'm not sure. What am I doing? Oh, the hair, yes. Um, okay, now this part gave me a lot of trouble. Basically, I'm trying to give the indicator of some hair regrowth, and on the side facing the viewer, well, the most prominent side, I should say, it came out pretty well. Um, yeah, the, the no real trick here, you just um, do a your black in a glaze consistency and apply many many thin layers until you've tinted the area where you've got the hair regrowth to your desired color. Anyway this um, process did take a while to do so let's skip ahead until I've got something um, different to show. So with all the designs um, and the hair finished I'm gonna Unify all of these colors by applying a thin wash of the midtone, uh, not a uh, wash, a glaze of the midtone. This is to give the impression that the tattoos in this case are under the skin rather than on top of it to make it look less like painted on and more like, well, a tattoo, quite frankly. And here we have the Victorias with the flesh finished. Now, um, on the Victoria of Blood, I didn't go too insane with the tattoos. I gave her an unk on her belly and a band on her arm, so you probably see that later in the video. So, to be honest, the rest of the video is not too exciting. It's getting more into um, just uh, finishing off all of the details as, well, the most prominent areas being the black leather and the flesh are done. So we'll just focus on the assorted clothes and um, gribbly bits of the miniature, of which there are many, not as much as a GW figure though. So with the base coating done, let's go on to our shade and highlight colours. Um, the colours we'll be using are, yeah, Trader Green as our base, Battlefield Brown as our shade, and Hammerfell Khaki as our highlight. So I'm going to apply the shade in two stages. The first stage I'll take the Trader Green and mix it 50-50 with my shade colour, in this case Battlefield Brown, and apply it fairly liberally in all of the areas I expect to be um, in shade. And then for my second stage I'll just take the pure colour for my shade and paint it in the very deepest recesses. So, <coughs> pardon me, a quick way of getting some shade in.
I think in future I'll try and keep all of my color mixing on the palette. It certainly looks a lot more um, interesting. It also helps jog my memory as well. All right, it looks like I'm beginning to apply the shade now and it's more or less done in the same manner. Um, yeah, 50-50 Traitor Green and Hammerfell Khaki for the first highlight, then almost pure Hammerfell Khaki for the second one. Uh, with highlights, I tend to be a bit conservative, so even if I, I rarely ever paint the base highlight color, I usually mix just a small amount of the mid-tone just to keep it um, connected with the um, mid-tone color. Anyway, so yeah, the process is pretty much the same for these two, so we'll um, skip over um, the gory details. Okay, the next stage will be to do the hair for both these miniatures, which obviously, since they're some weird kind of doppelganger sisterhood thing, um, will both be the same colour of black. Now, somebody wrote a rather excellent article on how to do hair with the P3 range, so I'll put the link up here. So, yeah, the first stage, obviously, is to put an even coat overall of the uh, base colour, which in this case is Thalma Black. And of course, since base coating is boring and not particularly good for watching, um, let's skip to the interesting parts. So, one thing I did off camera was a lot of the base coating for the leather strapping as well. Um, it's just a habit of mine. When doing a large miniature, I often base coat a couple of areas at once, uh, just so while one side is drying, I can go and do something else. It helps prevent to, uh, this entire hobby from taking up too much time. So, here we go with the hair. Um, this is the first highlight layer um, of coal black. So what I'm doing is I'm following the curvature of the hair and painting each individual strand out, sort of like picking them out. Now this should cover most of it, but we want to leave the deepest recesses of the hair the pure Thalma black. So with this process you want to take your time and use a, not a too thin a paint as you want to maintain a lot of control over where your paint ends up, so lots of sudden running can ruin the effect you're aiming for. So let's begin our next highlight. So it's going to be a mixture of frostbite and coal black. So we're just going to make a mix until we're happy with the color and then um, apply it on the hair as we were with the coal black but we're going to focus on an even smaller surface area specifically towards the very tips of the hair and the areas which will be catching the most sunlight such as the direct curves of the head. I am trying to be quite precise here as I want to maintain an even like line on the hair strands. If it's a bit too wavy on this particular miniature it's going to look odd due to the um, shape of the hair um, um, detail anyway. Some uh, types of hair detail might, it might be more appropriate to like say wash, dry brush or over brush but on this kind of style yeah it's all got to be done by hand. It's great fun. So now we're going to go to the final highlights and this will be pure frostbite and we're only going to touch the very tip of the hair and keep our paint a little thin as well to try and get that transition from our slightly lower highlights to this very high highlight. Here you want to be taking advantage of the natural uh, translucency of the P3 paint. Um, you want to do several um, almost glaze layers to build up the color at the very top of the hair and you want to use, place these highlights very sparingly as too much can make it look a bit strange. Anyway this is just about it for the hair but since you probably can't see it too well on camera let's just put up a shot of the finished hairs just so you can get an idea as to where the highlights and shades lie. So yeah, you can clearly see the Thalma black in the deepest recesses of the hair, while the coal black being in the majority, whereas the colour is considerably lightening towards the tips.
So here I'm just um, toning down some of the highlights where I think I've gone a bit overboard, but other than that, um, yeah, the hair for these miniatures is pretty much done. Oh, and I almost forgot. After I did all the highlighting and shading, I put a, um, a glaze of Thalma Black over all to tie all of the highlights together, and also to, well, dull them down just a little bit. So this part is getting on towards the finished miniature overall. I'm doing the grips of the weapon and a lot of the um, cloth um, tassels, I suppose, in a sanguine base. I'm going to highlight that up using by gradually mixing um, portions of the sanguine highlight color in to get some contrast going. Admittedly, I didn't think I did a particularly great job at this stage, but I'm get uh, at the time I was getting frustrated with this project and I just wanted to get it done. I'm sure if you're watching this you know the feeling. Okay, so getting started on the metallics, well, technically continuing on the metallics. Off camera I went ahead and base coated everything in pig iron and then applied an overall wash of, um, what was it? Vallejo wash um, black, I believe, yes. So, now we're at the stage of bringing back some of the shine to the metals. To do that, we will start by taking pig iron and reapplying it to all of the surfaces of the metallic that are facing directly up and slightly to the side. So, to create the impression that, obviously, just as in with conventional painting, the upper sides are more exposed to sunlight. So you can see that I'm hitting the um, parts of the grip and the pommel on the sword and the blade of course that are facing directly to sunlight that aren't like obscured by any other detail. Um, they're all getting a coat of this to bring back the original colour. And also some of the other metallics such as the armour plates like the broad flat surfaces and the um, her guns. They're also getting um, a coat of this on the upward facing surfaces. So moving on to our second highlight, um, this is Quicksilver I believe. We're going to apply it to, um, once again, a smaller area of many of the upwards um, facing surfaces like on the grip and um, handguard and also on the blade though, fairly liberally on the blade as well, shiny I suppose. And we did lose a lot of our, like, the glint of metal with the um, uh, black wash, so I felt the need to bring that back a bit. And fi our final highlight, which we'll, we will use the most sparingly, is um, scratch that everything I said last time. The previous highlight was plat radiant platinum. This highlight is quicksilver. Yeah, with this color, we're only going to hit the very, very sharpest edges of the sword, and not even going to touch a lot of the other metallic components. So yeah, that's um, pretty much it for the metals. Of course I painted the buttons and such, and um, the Victoria of Ashes belly button ring, um, but yeah, that's just a simple dot of the metallic colour, don't get it on anything else, it looks fine. Alright, and that should pretty much be the finished results. Um, so I did gloss over painting the um, a lot of the leather strapping that was um, bootstrap, uh, no, umbral umber, thalma black shade, uh, possibly rucksack tan highlight, um, yeah, so nothing particularly difficult about that. Um, any scabbards were painted the coal black with a slight um, shade of black to shade it, I didn't really bother to highlight, and that's pretty much it. The bases I just did off camera, um, so yeah, hooray, it's over. So to be honest, I'm not such a fan of the um, Malifaux plastics anymore. I find them a bit spindly and hard to clean up properly, and they often there are often a lot of mold lines that you really have to cover with um, putty and sand down before you um, get to your painting. Also, I think I just have a problem with pinning in general. Um, dismounting the Victoria of Ashes from her base was a nightmare. I ended up having to break her foot partially in order to um, properly um, get it separated. 
Yeah, but a bit of black paint, um, yeah, it covers up the um, damage and regluing rather neatly, I suppose. Uh, and also, in retrospect, I'm, I think my flesh needs a lot more work. It still looks a bit patchy, especially on the face of the Victoria of Ashes, I believe. So, yeah, I think I need to do more work, look into anatomy and looking at actual pictures and other people's work to get the um, locations of these shades and highlights right. So yeah, um, that's more of the outcast out of the way. Only two more Ronin to go and that's the um, Hide Swords box set finished. Next up I've got the Convict Gunslingers and the Desperate Mercenaries on the Malifaux painting list but I'm going to take a break from Malifaux for a bit. I'm trying to do some comp level painting, well with limited degrees of success, and um, yeah I want to make a start on some Frostgrave stuff so I can get some games in. Anyway, if you've made it this far I really do hope that this video has been useful to you in some way. Um, usual YouTube stuff, like, favorite, subscribe if you feel like it, it's cool if you don't though, um, but yeah, um, hope you enjoyed this and have a good one.